and it's not even just to say that I saw them live. It's not that. It's just that I want to have that experience of witnessing these songs played in front of me live, regardless of if they're going to meet that, that bar or not. Welcome to another episode from Takedowns to Breakdowns with a &P. Today we're here to talk about bucket list concerts. And the reason is very simple. Merciful Fate announced that they were going to have a 2022 tour, which got me balls to the wall excited. And then when they actually put out the dates, I was like, there's got to be a mistake somewhere here. Because yeah, or like there's... A, be, a to be continued list. That's what I thought. Like, this is like the first leg of the 2022 tour. And then we'll announce the second leg later because there's only one North American show is at Cycle Las Vegas. The rest is all European and pretty much all of them are festival dates. So it's not like a tour tour per se. It's well, technically it is a tour, but they're hitting all the big festivals in Europe, including Tuska. So if you are in Finland or if you're planning on going to Tuska, if that doesn't get your your uh, your blood uh, pumping, I, I don't know what will. I mean, that, that to me would be an amazing experience to see Merciful Fate at Tuska. So that got me thinking. I know for me, Merciful Fate, King Diamond, definitely on my bucket list of bands that I want to see live. These two bands are iconic. Uh, I, I absolutely love King Diamond. I, I just, I need to see them perform live before the day I die. I just have to. Like, I, it's it's really something that I feel like it's, it's, a, it's I don't know, it, it bothers me that I haven't had a chance to see them yet for whatever multitude of reasons. If they don't tour that much. If we already didn't have plans to go to Europe and trips weren't already booked and plane tickets weren't already bought... I'm thinking I may I would have may pick up a flight and just go to one of these festivals just because of King Diamond. I know probably if you asked me 10, 20 years ago, I would have added Manowar to that list. They're no longer on that bucket list, even though I've never seen them. Having said that, if they came to town, I would fucking go. I wouldn't. All right, I would because I still I still enjoy myself some Manowar, but they're they're not at the point where I would climb Mount Everest to see one of their shows. They're not there anymore. They used to be, but they're not there anymore. But King Diamond and Merciful Fate definitely are in. I hope they add some more dates. I, I know King is no longer, he's not a prince, he's a, an old king, but fuck, like, throw a couple more dates in there. Some some big cities in, in the US, at least in the US, if you don't want to come to Canada, like New York, Boston, Chicago. Because then we can Chicago. make the trip. Yeah, like we're doing for, for Rammstein. We're going to, to New York to see them. Uh, I, I just hope something changes. I hope some few dates get added. I, I have to see those bands live at some point in time. At least that's my hope. Now, outside of those bands, I have a few others in my mind, but who's immediately? Like, when you think of a band that you haven't seen live, who immediately comes to you? To you? Well, System of a Down. You know, that, I, that's a band I have grew up with. Um, and it was one of the first metal bands I actually got into. And so they have... I know live they're not going to be the same crisp sound you get from, like, their older stuff. Um, because, you know, I, I've seen the live Age, videos. Age, time. Age and time, yeah. I've seen the live videos. Uh, so, so I know, but something about they—they they have a very—they have a sentimental value to me. So I feel like just being there in general, just taking in the music and taking around the the people around me who are also probably feeling the exact same way I am. Especially your age group. Exactly. You know, that's all I really need. I think it's more about the experience uh, than, than the music. At than that the point. Mu It's almost more about the experience than the music. It's like going to. Uh, a festival that you've looked up to, like Vakken, for example. I think w when you've never been to Vakken and you go for the first time, you're probably more mesmerized with everything around you than the bands who are playing. You've probably seen some of those bands like a hundred times. I I'm, I'm with you. I, I don't have high expectations as far as, as performance is concerned from System of a Down live because as you, I've seen videos of some of their uh, later shows and it wasn't... It wasn't up to what I was hoping it, it would crisp. be. Yeah, it wasn't It wasn't up to my standard uh, in terms of what my expectations were. But I'll be like, you know what? I don't care. I still want to see them live. Exactly. I just... It, it, and it's not even just to say that I saw them live. It's not that. It's just that I want to have that experience of witnessing these songs played in front of me live, regardless of if they're going to meet that that bar or not. I, I'm, I'm with you at System of a Down. I think it's doable. I think it's a matter of time. The question is, are they going to release a new album? Eh, I don't know if there. I don't know if there's ever going to be a new System of a Down album, but the records are getting old, so there's there's always a chance of For, an anniversary. Yeah, yeah. You know, like uh, play one record from start to finish. That kind of that kind of tour. 
Um, so there's still possibilities. Yeah, DS side and Cataclysm, they're going to go on tour together in the fall. And there, there's anniversaries of two, w one record of each. So they're playing their albums from start to finish. So there's always that possibility of, you know, one of their albums reaching a, a huge milestone and then going on tour. I think the possibility is there, to be honest. Yeah. Now, a few bands that I want to mention to you because I want to get your take on this. And, and let me start off uh, with Slayer. Now, they're retired, but we all know that that doesn't really mean shit. Yeah. Uh, would you be hyped for a reunion no. tour? What about a big four? Slayer, Megadeth, Anthrax, Metallica. Th no. That hasn't been done in a fucking long time. I still wouldn't be very... Uh... No? No, because I've seen all those bands. I know, but, but not together on one bill. I feel like I'd actually be more excited to see... Uh, Megadeth probably out of out of uh, and probably Anthrax too more than Metallica and Slayer. I like Metallica, Slayer, Anthrax. You know, I like them all, but I've seen them before, so it's not really a. It's not for me like oh. I You've seen all four of them. Actually. I've seen Slayer like almost I, I think three times and, and and twice it was in one year. Yeah, and, and also twice was the their their last tour. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. So, uh, you know, I've already... Well, one of those performances was the last performance in Canada, period. Yeah. Which was at Heavy Montreal. So, and, and you know what? I feel like that that was the perfect way to end off me seeing them live, was on that big stage, you know, in, in Heavy Montreal. I think that was the perfect way to kind of end that off. It's like Tom Brady retiring at the end of winning Super Bowl. Exactly. Instead of then coming back and then never winning it again. Exactly. Okay, I'm with you on that. I, I wouldn't be hyped... For a Slayer reunion tour, I wouldn't. I, first of all, I don't think they've been uh, gone long gone enough. long enough for me to really want to see them uh, on a reunion it's tour. Like, it's like when it a would feel kind of cheap. It's like when a grandparent calls you and says, "Have you missed me?" It's like I saw you yesterday. Like, yeah. give me time to miss you. you. You need to build. You need. You need to. I agree with you. But if they announced the big four, fuck, that would get me excited. I, I've seen all of them too, but not in one bill. That's that's. I don't know if. For a thrash guy, I know you're not a thrash metal guy. For a thrash guy like me, that there's a certain allure. There's a certain mystique with seeing the big four on tour together. So more for that than the bands themselves. You know what I mean? So I, that's kind of where I am uh, with that one. I didn't uh, say I wouldn't go. I just said I wouldn't be excited. You wouldn't be thrilled. I wouldn't be like waiting to go. I would be like, oh, buy the tickets. We'll go. All right. So what about... I'll probably have fun. It's just that it's more like... You know, it, it doesn't get me, like, jumping out of my seat, like, get it now, I wish time could fly just so we can... No, no, it's... You know, I've, I've seen those bands, and I enjoy those bands, but uh, I feel like Slayer Live has kind of overstayed their welcome for me, at least, because I've seen them so many times, and... It, Some people would argue that's not times enough. enough. I, I know, I know, but I, I want to end off with that big stage feel, because I know for a fact I'll never see them again on a bigger stage than that. Yeah, Heavy Montreal and was I pretty think, big. They were the headliner. And I think that's a perfect way to kind of end off, like, my, my Slayer run was that it, it was all building because each time we saw it, it was a bigger venue. I think it was a good way of, uh, of uh, ending it off on the, on the grandest stage of them all in Canada. Okay, I agree with you on that. I don't necessarily disagree. For me, it's just the big four plays a different role. Now, Slipknot, I feel like we should have seen them by now, but for we some odd reason... Been. We've never actually got to see them. We were supposed to. The last time they played in Canada, we were in in uh, Finland. So that's the reason. But those, those but I, reason, I feel but... like they've been here so many times and we've never gotten to go. Like, But now that's going to change. In a few months, we're getting to see Slipknot live in Toronto. Uh, I'm excited about that. They happen to be in town at a time that we're in town, that we're not traveling. So we're going to be able to check that off the list. I'm pretty excited about that show. Uh, not necessarily excited about Cypress Hill opening for them, but that's going to be interesting nevertheless. So I'm all I'm all in for it. I just think that they put in a, they put on a crazy live performance, and from that alone, I think we're going to get our money's worth. So I think yeah. it's going to be a great show. The entertainment value. Yeah, it's going to be a great show to see. Two bands I want to mention before we call it a quits on this video. One of them is Black Sabbath. Where do you stand on that? Wow, that's that's a very um, different one than I thought you would pick. But, but yeah, Black Sabbath's a good one. Definitely. Would With wanna... Ozzy, like... You know, we were actually supposed to see Ozzy. We were supposed to see Ozzy, but then the pandemic happened. The, the tour got canceled, then he got sick, uh, and then the tour never happened. So I've never seen Ozzy live, but, but I, I almost feel... But Ozzy and Black Sabbath... Oh, there's no choice here. I think you have to choose yeah, Black, Black Sabbath. Sabbath. Yeah, Black Sabbath. It's a no-brainer. I, I, would, I would love to have that experience. I would love to have that... Uh, marked off on my bucket list. And then last but not least, Rage Against the Machine. Where you That's stand? a good one. 
That is a good one. Yeah. Well, they have a tour going on right now, but they're selling the tickets for like a kidney and 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 half a lung. Yeah, no. So, uh, to me, I feel a little bit gouged if I'm to, you know, this is how I feel about that. I've seen Rage Against the Machine live, and I saw them during the Evil Empire tour. So I feel like I saw them probably at their prime, and I saw them at a big festival, big venue, great experience, and that's the memory that I have. Since then, I saw Prophets of Rage, which is technically Rage Against the Machine minus Zach. Um, so I also got to see that aspect, that, that you know, version 2.0, if you will, of Rage Against the Machine. I just feel for a band that calls themselves Rage Against the Machine, who, who's always uh, carry the flag of, of the little guy fighting against oppression and whatever, to put out a tour after so many years of not being together, of not playing shows, and then charging like $500 a ticket for nosebleeds, like, what kind of machine are you raging against? I feel like you're the machine now, and I'm and the I'm one raging. that needs to raging against yeah. you. That, that turned me off. That should turn you off, but at the same time, you should also feel... Wait, like, was it also... Was it a bigger venue than the last time you saw them? Well, it was going to be at, at, at uh, Air Canada Centre or whatever, the Scotiabank Arena, whatever. I, it's not the same. I saw them live outdoors in a festival. Exactly. Now it's going to be at a, at a basketball arena, which is big. It's, it, it's big, but at the same time, you have to take that into consideration and also think to yourself, like... Do I want my last memory of seeing these guys live to be, you know, in the nosebleeds all the way far back or, you know, in the sea of people at a at a big venue outdoors? I, I think that also kind of plays into the, the, the memory that you, you kind of look back on. I think they're playing on the nostalgic role. They know they can charge that kind of money. They know because they can people charge... Will, remote. People will buy it because they haven't seen... Some people never seen them live and some people... Saw them like me when I was your age. So yeah. there's that nostalgic feel like, I want to see this band perform again. They're back together. They're reunited. It's not Prophets of Rage. It's Rage Against the Machine with, with the, the original lineup. So there's all of the, these enticements happening that would drive you to spend all sorts of different money on a ticket. Now, I know some of the ticket money is going towards a charity of their choosing. I think I should choose who I donate my money. Because... I'm basically giving me giving them my money, then they're donating my money, so they're getting a tax credit on my money. I'm not the one getting a tax credit. And I know this sounds like maybe that I'm cheap or whatever, but no, it, it's it's. I feel like if any other band charge whatever they want to charge, I'm okay with because they don't have, or they didn't use their platform to to come out and and fight for the little guy against the big corporation. I think they're becoming the big corporation. They're becoming that greedy big corporation. Yeah. And the fans should decide who they want to donate their money to or not. I'm not going to the show to help a charity. I'm going to the show to see their music. If you really want to do something special, donate your some of your profits to whatever charity you want to donate. That's on you. But you want to make a donation with my money. I don't know. The whole thing doesn't sit right with me. The whole thing doesn't sit right with me. Like, if you want to say, like, bring food, canned food and whatever, that goes to the food bank or whatever, I'm totally pretty, cool with that's, that. That's really cool, yeah. I'm totally cool with that. But to charge double the amount of the tickets and say that that double of the amount is going to go towards the charity, it's not going to go towards the charity in my behalf. It's going to go towards the charity on their behalf. Exactly. I feel like, you know, that's like me asking you for money to donate to a charity. Then am I really doing a good deed? No, it's, it's my money. Therefore. It's your money. You know, like, why you need to play the, the, the middleman? But you'll get the credit. But I'm getting the credit for it. Yeah. So if you want to get the credit, then donate your own money. I don't know. It kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I know some people are like, you know, whatever, dude, it's for this. You you can reason whatever you want to reason to make it to make it sound right or to make you feel right but about it. But you're still paying like seven hundred dollars to send the nosebleeds. So I could listen to the phone. I can listen to their songs on my phone from the nosebleeds, and I'll probably get a better like experience. Cause what? I, I don't know. I could never watch a, a, a sh like a concert from all the way the fuck up there. Listen, when I saw the price of the tickets, I said, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. And that's how that ended. That's how that dream ended. All right, so that's for me. That's it. Do you have anybody yeah. else that you can think of? or? Uh, I thought of Norther, but I feel like we've talked about Norther before. Yeah, I think, I think Norther, the chances of them doing a show are slim none. Yeah. More none than slim, Yeah. To be to be honest. I think if that was to Unless happen... Unless you win the lottery and you pay all of them. I think there's some bad blood there. There is some issues with with the ownership of the name, uh, copyrights, all sorts. There, there's so much shit in that fan that it's very hard to stand in front of it and not get smeared with it. So, and I don't think anybody wants to come close to it 
not even with a 10 foot pole. So the chances are it's never going to happen. I think it could happen if they were smart about it, if they were really business smart, happen without calling Norther, just call it like whatever, you know, Northeast, you know, North by Northeast, whatever. And it's the same dudes playing the same songs, but you just don't call yourself so there's no issues of copyright. And you do just a one-off show. I, I think there's ways around it, but I, I think there's so much, uh, not necessarily bad blood, but there's, there's animosity. such a- Animosity. Animosity, and, 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 and the band has left a bad taste in so many people's mouths, not, not outside of the band, but within the band, that nobody just wants to relive those bad experiences. But I think the fans kind of deserve a one-off show, to be honest. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's been a very long time. All right, guys, who's on your bucket list? What bands you've never got to see that are still around, still perhaps touring on a one-off here and there that you would absolutely would love to see uh, play in front of you? Let us know. Use the comment section, and we'll see you guys at the next video. See ya.